What's going on today, guys? This is Tony from Team Divine Pro here. Uh, can I match you guys with a Vanguard thing? Improving your game? Improving your bank card fight Vanguard game? Episode 2. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, the early aggression. So, levels uh, grade 0, grade, like, first turn, grade 1 aggression. So, what am I talking about? Well, let's talk about starters for a second. Starters are... The most common starters are Forerunners. Forerunners are good because they can come out and they give you technically a plus one for... Actually, they they can't, they can't negate your minus one from hand because you had to ride on top of it. Because that's a minus one. Unless if you play the ride combo, like the superior rides like Blaster Dark or anything. Then that's not a minus one. That is a plus one if you get it off. But anyways, Forerunners are most common because they're the most easy to get off because they just go... Whoop, and they're done. So, early aggression. What am I talking about? I am talking about when you want to play a lot of you. You play something like Conroe. So if you play something like Conroe or play something at all like that can go back into the soul or dr drops itself as a forerunner, it's really good. Do you know why? Because of the fact that you can play aggressive with a thing such as like a stand tri uh, draw trigger. So what? I, or a grade one. So there's situations that can happen, such as this one. I haven't used this deck in a while. Holy cow. Okay, so, uh... Say you ride the bar. Your Conroe moves. And you have these cards in hand. Actually, let's say you only have one card. You have the draw trigger in hand. Everything else is like a 0, but as 5... Like a 10k shield. Now, you can place this here, and you can swing for a 9. That's crazy, right? Oh my gosh. But that's... The reason why I would say I would suggest this to you guys would be because that it's only a 5k shield. Bar has a 5k shield. It's just the same thing. If you're playing a 10k shield, then whoa there, don't do that. But this is really simple because you can after you can use Conroe's ability to counterblast one to send it into to send it away and search for something. In this way, this card becomes afterwards a booster. So a being being aggressive this way isn't that bad because you don't lose anything. And on top of that, with Gallant Claw, you're applying them to attack it. So they're good. They have to waste resources on attacking this instead of the bar. Now, let's say we have a different situation where we have the bar and we call it like this. We attack for a number. It's pretty cool. You know, early aggression. Then you can counterblast it, put it away. You have a booster. Same situation. Early aggression is not that hard to understand. Some people like to go like this. They just like, oh, okay, cool. I'll just put it there. Well, if you have the cards in your hand, you might as well just call them here to the columns, and then you get another attack. Unless if they're playing something that can retire the Conroe before you can get it off, then maybe, most likely, I wouldn't suggest it. But most decks, apart from like Majesty Lord Blaster and all that type of stuff, cannot retire that early in the game. Even Kagero, they can't retire that early. Like, neat. Anyways, you probably dealt them enough damage. If you dealt them that much damage, then there has to be. Then you're doing pretty well. And even if they do retire the Conroe early game, it doesn't matter because that freed up the spot, and then that at least puts that back to behind you. That's just giving you an extra plus. Because that allows that. So, in other words, Forerunners promote uh, early aggression. And the way to best use them is to al allow yourself to apply aggression to your opponent, such as this. Or using draw triggers, because draw triggers can be boost could boosters, because like uh, the 5k booster, where is she? Monica, where's my Monica? One second, guys. The Monicas can't find the... Oh, I'll just use the trick. Carbuncle. Okay, so, uh, you know, Carbuncle, that's swinging for 9k. So, anyways, that would probably work out, because 9k is still higher than any base uh, grade 1 Vanguard. And sometimes, this is also hits other cards like uh, the the Ready Horse, the Berserk Dragons. Anything that's 9k at, at grade 2 could also be hit by this column. Because, let's say, you don't want to use the Counter Blast just yet. You can still leave this out, you still have a column, and you conserve the resources by not having to play something like this, like that. Because, then you still have one card extra in your hand for later on in plays. And they, at some point, they have to attack it because they, they're going to not be able to attack your Vanguard or your other call up, so they're going to have to attack it. Then they clear up. That's made them waste one attack on a perfectly useless Vanguard 
I mean, rear guard. Because you could have perhaps, you could then perhaps just call something a lot stronger. And besides, the 5k, after you counterblast, then you do have it like that. This, with that, makes 17, or with just a Nihala, makes 15. That still swings for a good number against 10k base vanguards or 10, grade 2 10ks, because grade 2 10ks are highest at 10k, unless if you're playing Strike in, there's like 11 or something. But anyways, I digress. Uh, it's really simple to play. Early aggression isn't something too hard to comprehend. The only decks that you should be aware of are the decks that can retire early on the cards that you want to keep, such as like your Cogro or your Wiggle Brave or anything like that. You kind of want to keep those uh, keep those on the field for as long as possible to get those later on pluses. So then perhaps play aggressively would be not the best idea, but playing passive aggress but playing like this is not recommended because I still think that you should just play it like that so that you can have a booster here and a booster here and something here so that you can boost with Conroe later on. So that way you take full advantage of your four rider and not just having to waste it here. Because let's be honest, even if you do play it, even if you do ride this, you attack like that, you still have two columns that have more power so that you can give the triggers there. It's a lot easier to fill up this space later on than it is to have a, a rear guard that doesn't have a power boost because their per the opponent still has to guard for like at least the one to pass like this, but this one they just have to call the block whatever number is told to you. So anyways guys, I hope you learned something from this improving your card fight vanguard game segment. This is episode 2. Uh, I will be doing more of these seeing as I am doing more Way Schwartz ones and I do feel like the vanguard aspect of this uh, channel has been neglected, neglected a lot. I do apologize, it's just that there hasn't been much to do about Cardfight Vanguard, it's kinda, I'm just waiting for Revengers and all that, just, uh, I'm just waiting for, like, the good, like, the better sets to come out, because, you know, not much to do right now. Anyways, guys, this has been Tony from Team Divine Pro, hope you enjoyed the segment, please comment, rate, subscribe, like, do whatever you want, just help, just help me out if you can, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, this has been Tony, signing off.